Thank you for doing that. Mic back up. Do we have any more speakers? No, that's it? Okay. I'm going to do one more, and then I'm going to announce City Sounds. And they're going to play a set for you guys. Do two more. I'm going to do one more, Kevin. Do a good one. This is actually a cover poem. Um, it is by Amin Drew Law, and it is called Unsaid. When you go to jail, the first thing that they take from you is your shoelaces. I thought that it was so they could break your dignity, show their authority, so you don't hang yourself. They didn't tell me that. I'm here because I used to sell Oxycontins. 20s, 40s, 80 milligrams my job now is to be a barcode and to listen to people who hate me. We didn't grow up poor. They called it um, lower middle class. All I know is that I had food stamps and all my clothes came from a place where the price tags were written in Sharpie. It was not an easy job. But you learn to make relationships. Maximize profit by selling to the rich neighborhoods. Always easier to sell to suburban kids. We got a saying around here, sellouts are the best buyers. You know in the state of Virginia, when you're a felon, you got a petition to get your right to vote back? I learned more here than I did at Lake Weir High School. Now you're telling me that because I'm a felon, I can't vote? That's ironic, yeah? I always thought irony was for British comedies and white girls with guitars. I used to write a lot as a kid. I kept some of the journals to remind myself that my mother's son is not a wicked man. But what they don't tell you is that all the addicts get stuck in your head. They're not all junkies and college tweakers. They're semi-pro football athletes with no insurance or construction workers with herniated discs or mothers who taught me how to tie my shoelaces. Both of my parents died of drug overdose. I paid for their funerals and drug money. <laughs> there goes that irony again. A poet's been coming to the prison lately. She gave us something called a, a writing prompt. Start off with a sentence, if the streets could talk, I'm not much of a writer anymore. Every time I try, I see my parents' blood in my own fingertips. If the streets could talk, my hand shakes through the page. The, the guards all flinch when I stand, but she tells me that it's okay not to write, that listening can do just as much. So I do. Today, she read from a collection of poems. One of them read, the earth's breath is what we call silence. It gets so quiet in here. You would think prison and ungoverned clamor, but it is silent. It is windless. If the streets could talk, no. If the streets could talk, no. If the streets could talk, I, I think that I got it now. If the streets could talk, I would. I've seen what happens to those that do. Faces all bled into the asphalt. All I want to do now is carve my parents' name into a tree. Remind my mother that I can still make things beautiful. Tell my father that he was a fireman, but I turned him into a furnace. I wrote all of this in my journal tonight. But I dare not tell anyone. If I did, they'd all think I want my shoelaces back. Thank you.